Okay, so you've made it to the third video. The third video is going to be about drawing a route between the annotations that we dropped in the previous video. And you can kind of think of this like if you have any a running app or a biking app or, you know, any kind of app like that where at the end of a run it tells you, you know, it shows you your route along a point. Think of it like that. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be dropping a line on the map between our starting annotation and our ending annotation. So let's jump right in. Okay, welcome back to the third video. And so in this video, we're gonna be drawing a route between our start pin and our end pin. And this is actually gonna be a fairly quick video, hopefully. It's only adding two functions into our existing project. And so if you're following along with me, your project should look the w how mine looks. Now, if you weren't and you're jumping in here, you can always download the project files from the GitHub repository and you'll be able to see where I am now. And maybe I'll break up the three projects into three separate files so that you know kind of the starting and end points. We'll see. Okay. But what do we need to do? So we actually want to draw a route. And so we've kind of been going in sequential order here where we got our JSON, we parsed our JSON, we added pins. And so now we're gonna add a new function and we're just gonna say draw, oh, probably should give it the function, there we go, function. And we're gonna give this called draw route. And what do we need to draw our route? Well, we need route data. So we're gonna, we're gonna pass in the route data, which is going to be of type CL location object, an array of CL location objects, okay? And so we want to make sure that there's actually data in our route before we attempt to draw it. And so if route data dot count is equal, equal to zero, so if it's equal to zero, we want to, we're gonna give myself a little bit of a visual reason as to what's happening here. And we're gonna use the, the yellow circle icon just because it's not, a, it's not a bad thing, it's not a good thing. It just means that there's no coordinates to draw. Like everything's working as it should, but there's nothing to draw. So no coordinates to draw, right? And we're just gonna leave it like that and we're gonna return because we don't wanna go any further. However, if, we do if what we passed in has at least even one point, we should attempt to draw it, right? Or you could even say that if it's less than a certain number of points, don't draw it, but you know, that's up to you and the logic you wanna have in your project, right? And so we're gonna say, let coordinates equal route data dot map, and then we're gonna go location, return CL location coordinate to D in, right? And so we're gonna map our route data into a CL location coordinate to D. And we're gonna say, we're gonna return location dot coordinate, okay? So we're going to map our current data structure into a CL location coordinate to D array structure using this uh, route data dot map here. And then we want to update our view, but be we wanna make sure that we're doing this on the main queue. And so we're gonna go dispatch queue dot main dot async because anytime you're working with your ui code and you're changing it after the project after the view controller already initialized you want to make sure that you're doing that on the main thread so self dot route and so this is where we it gets a bit interesting there's a couple things we need to do and those are adding some um we need to add a var route overlay of type mk overlay and we're going to make that optional and then we're going to go back down to our function and in the dispatch.q we're going to say self dot route overlay there it is um, equals mk polyline with the coordinates of coordinates which we just created above and it's gonna be the, the length of those coordinates, so coordinates dot count. Okay, then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add that overlay to our map view. So self dot map view dot add overlay um, of self dot route overlay. And we're gonna force unwrap that. And it's gonna be level 
and we want that to be dot above roads. And then it's going to be let. And so this is what's going to zoom up, zoom into our map a bit for us. So custom edge padding of UI edge inserts equals UI edge inserts um, top left bottom right which I'm gonna believe is 50 50 50 and 50 I don't think uh, 50 50 50 and 50 yeah that, good enough for me and then we're going to oh let me do that thing I do that makes everything readable for you guys let me move these things down here perfect to make sure that the parentheses is last and then self dot oh, self dot map oh, dot map view dot set visible rect uh, set visible map rect I think yep set visible map rect oh self dot route overlay route overlay uh, and we're going to force unwrap that dot bounding map rect and the edge oh, there we go and then the edge padding we need to add that because I actually didn't so custom edge padding or not custom edge padding sorry it's edge padding custom edge padding and animated we're gonna make that false for now or you know what a little animation never hurt nobody let's make that true and we'll get a nice little zoom in feature okay now we can't draw this route yet because we need to create what is called a polyline renderer and so we need to we need to first create a MK polyline renderer in our map view delegate down here. And so underneath the view for annotation, so I wanna make sure we're outside that last curly bracket, we want to search for by typing in renderer for overlay, MK overlay, and it's this one right here. So I just wanna make sure it's renderer for overlay, MK overlay returning an MK overlay renderer, okay? And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a render and we're just gonna call it renderer. Yeah, renderer. You can name yours whatever you want, but we're gonna call mine renderer and it's we're gonna make ours a gradient. So originally in this project, I had it as like a blank polyline, but I found this MK pol gradient polyline renderer and I thought it was cool and we're, so we're gonna use that one instead. And I think it uh, makes things look a little bit more professional. And so we're gonna call this overlay. Okay, and we're going to pass in our overlay. What we need to do here now is set up our renderer. We need to give it some attributes. And so the first thing I need to do when I found out about this is that we want to set some colors, right? And we want to give it some locations. And our locations is going to be nil because we're not going to use that function of this. And we're going to set up an array. And so the first thing is give ourselves some space. Don't know why this is like that. And you know what? We could have left that right up here because we're not really gonna use it. And then we need to go down here. And so I used three colors for this and I used custom colors to match my pins. And so the first color is going to be 0 0.02 red, um, 0 0.91 green, Okay, so I used custom colors for my project. So if you don't want to use custom colors and you have just, you can also use, um, and I'll give you an example here. Uh, you can use the built-in colors from here and you can say dot yellow, dot blue, dot green, dot indigo or system indigo. You can use those colors instead, but I'll show you why I used these colors in a second. And I made a mistake here. This locations is an array of objects and so we want to make it give it an empty array because we're not going to be passing in anything whatsoever the next thing so after we've set the colors of our renderer we need to set we don't have to but i'm going to set the line cap renderer dot 
line cap equals dot round just to clean that up and then we're also gonna set the line width so how wide we want our line to be I thought three looked pretty nice um, depending on your needs you might want a smaller line you might want a bigger line but I'm gonna let three and so now that we've created our renderer we set some of its variables we need to return that renderer so return render okay and as you can see that error was telling us all about that okay so we finished our view for renderer and if we go up here and we created our draw route function now we're good to draw the route but we need to call that function somewhere and so let's go back up here so we'll go here where we set our map and just to run us down what we've been doing we set our map constraints we got the json and if we were successful in getting the json then we parse our json then we wanted to add pins which we've done and now we're going to draw route and we're going to have to pass in route coordinates and the reason we know that this is okay to do this this way as well is if we go down here you can see we check if our route data is equal to zero so if we don't have any information in our route data what we're passing in then we just want to exit this function and do nothing now for extra safety you could do it in here where you could say if you know if you get json and you parse the json successfully and then you could do another if let as well and you could just keep going down that way but for the sake of this project i did it this way because i felt like it was easy to kind of show the steps of what was happening and so now we're good to stop and we're going to build our project again and so now we'll get a cool zoom in effect and we'll also get our line showing our route from our start pin to our end pin okay and that was everything so that was it in three quick videos you were able to add a map to your project programmatically you were able to add annotations you were able to customize those annotations and then you were able to draw a route between your two annotations and so now you should be good for taking this and putting it into any project that you might have where that this kind of function and feature set is something you need to include. You have a bit of understanding of where to go from here and that's great. Okay, great. So you've made it through all three videos. So congratulations if you've gotten this far. I'm going to repeat some earlier advice I gave. If you've gotten through the entire project and you're kind of just learning things, what I would recommend you do is try and do the entire project again all by yourself. As you can see, it doesn't take super long to do. Try and do the whole thing all by yourself without without following along on every step and only come to the videos if you desperately run into some problems. It'll just really help with you retaining the information and remembering what to do and honestly will only help you down the road. And so that's a little bit of advice that I'm gonna repeat. Um, outside of that, if you've enjoyed the series, which I hope you did, I hope you can leave a like on all three videos. I'd love to see your comments down below. Uh, any feedback is greatly appreciated. Honestly, if there's things you like, if there's things you didn't like, if there's more topics you'd like me to cover, things like that. Now, I'm not exclusively turning this channel into a tutorial channel, but I just figured you know, I put it out in the community. A couple people responded that they wanted a tutorial. This was something that I was kind of in the weeds with a while back myself, and I figured um, there might be, we could make a great resource around Map and MapKit with UIKit, and so I decided why not be me. So there we go. So again, hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.